All right, so I wanted to jump on here and do a quick video. My last video, it was about reverb reduction. And in that video, I mentioned a company called Crumple Pop. And I, I think their echo remover is really good. And the only two uh, downfalls that it had was one, they don't have a Windows version. And two, it's not AAX compatible. Well, I think I was able to figure out one of those two issues. And not only is this good for Crumple Pop, but it goes beyond um, to other plugins that this might be useful, especially for Avid editors. So there's a company out there, it's uh, called Cush View. Cush, Cush View? Yeah. And they create this plugin, uh, it's called Element. Now, this basically is, it, it's a plugin host, but this can serve as a plugin wrapper um, for Avid Media Composer, and I'm assuming this would work in Pro Tools as well. Um, so basically it's node-based. You have an audio input, audio output, and then you string along your plugins in the order that you want to use them. Here I have a voiceover. Um, we'll check it in a minute. Um, but just as you can see, I have the audio denoise, um, echo remover, and pop filter, uh, pop remover. Now I don't really need to use any of these plugins on this voiceover. Um, just putting this out there so you guys can see that I can run these plugins inside of Avid through this host, um, and it should play back fine. Now, this is really good, um, not only because it helps us use these plugins in particular, but it just opens up a lot more plugins that um, you might be able to bring into Avid Media Composer. For example, th there's a company out there, Analog Obsession, and they make these great plugins. Um, here I have an example of one of them, Famous Compressor. <laughs> and they mod a lot of nice plugins, uh, a lot of analog stuff, uh, actually mostly all analog stuff. So this is great. I mean, you can use basically any VST and um, audio unit if you're using Mac, works for both Mac and PC. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this app is somewhat of an open source app. Um, when you go to the website, you have two options. You could pay $2 to download the compiled installer, again, Windows and Mac, um, and that's a one-time download pretty much, uh, I think a, a couple days later, you can't download anything else anymore from the website, or you can pay a subscription of $2 a month. And that way you can have the updates available, um, you know, when they're released. Now you could always pay the $2 when you need to update the next version. So, you know, you could pay $2 today and three or four months down the road, you pay another $2, you get the next version, um, next updated version. I think that might work for most people, depending, I mean, especially if you downloaded one that's working solid and you have no issues with it. Um, again, just wanted to get on here and show you this because I think this is really cool. I mean, you go in here, you could install any VST or audio unit plugins that you have. Um, right, right here, I'm using just the audio units um, that I scanned. Uh, you know, Acoustica Audio, for example, they make these plugins that are really heavy. Um, so if you start installing uh, audio units, VSTs, and AAX, I mean, you're, you're going to load up your system and fill up your drive pretty quick. Um, here's an option. You could just install either audio units or VST and then use this plugin to, you know, host it inside your, your um, editing app or audio workstation app. Um, great option, guys. I can't recommend it more. So another thing to know is when you purchase the app, it comes in not only plugin format, but standalone. And this is uh, important to know because when you first get the uh, app installed, you want to open this up and you want to scan um, for your audio units or VSTs, whatever plugins you want to use with this. Um, you scan it once and it'll remember your plugins. So once you're done and you're set up with that, um, you can just go ahead and start using it. It's really simple. So far, stable. I haven't had too many issues um, with it. I think one time when I first got it, I, I didn't didn't know what I was doing and I loaded it up and ended up crashing the system. But outside of that one instance, this has all worked out 
great. Um, again, I recommend it. It's $2. Um, and it, it, it solves a lot of issues with, with using plugins that you like to use that may not be available for Avid. All right, so that's it. I hope you guys like this video. Give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe, and I'm going to keep trying to find stuff that uh, you guys might find useful.